we thank you for this day on today. We thank you for this Pentecost Sunday. We thank you, oh God, that you allowed us to raise up, oh God, just to come to the house of the Lord to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, we come to say thank you today. We come to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. So God, we invite you into this worship experience on today. God, I know that we may be few in number, oh God, but we can lift up hallelujah, which is the highest praise. We can show back you on today, Oh God, we can hallow you on today, oh God. We can allow you on today, oh God, to let you know that you are so worthy and so wonderful. So God, come on in, God, this worship experience. Come on in, God, and move, God, today. Come on in, God, and ship the atmosphere today. In the name of Jesus, God, and we're going to give you the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God, put your hands together. We're going to give you the praise, oh God. God. We're going to keep on praising you. And all of God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Now turn the service over to Pastor Hardaway. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise on today, for he is worthy to be praised. We are grateful unto God for this day that he has given unto us. Thank you, Reverend Karen, for leading us thus far in worship on today. How many of you know that God is good? How many of you know that God is good? I mean, how many of you know that God is real good? Amen. She named all of those foods. I guess y'all cooking them, huh? I don't get it because she don't eat any of that stuff. <laughs> Amen. She done got me off of a lot of stuff. She talking about hot dogs and hamburgers. If it ain't turkey or chicken, it ain't burger but we praise God for that we um, want to take this time this opportunity to um, remember those who have lost their lives uh, in service of our country um, I know that we um, may value Memorial Day for other things as well but this day was actually set aside for those who have given their life or have lost their life in service. And if you go to the cemeteries, um, you will see graves that are marked as such. And I think that even in our own congregation, we have lost those who were serving. Vivian, you had someone in your family that um, lost and others who have lost in service. And could you just bow your heads for a few moments and just let's lift up a prayer for those that were left behind, for family members. Let's lift up a prayer. said amen the church said amen scripture 100 psalm says make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the lord he is god it is he who hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people we are the sheep of his pasture and it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise Give thanks unto him and bless his name. And it ends by saying, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. And the church said, amen. Amen. We have a morning hymn for this morning. All right. 248. 248. Everybody grab your hymnals. Please just don't read, sing with us. <laughs>
Facebook Live, those who are watching us on YouTube this week, we are grateful for your giving. I remind you of your giving through Cash App, the dollar sign, TVCNF, um, GiveLify app as well. Amen and amen. Pray that all is well. And keep you on this week. It represents the coming of the Holy Spirit, getting the birthday of the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When the disciples were in the upper room, in other tongues, as God gave them utterance, people from other nations from other places, asked how can we hear the, how they speak in this manner. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have done. We pray, God, your blessings upon your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Oh, <laughs> 
and our salvation. We thank you, oh God, because you are our light and our salvation. We ain't got nothing and nobody to fear. So God, we come today to lift up your name on high. For there's no other name that's greater than your name. So we come today to say thank you, oh God. We come today to say thank you for being our healer and our deliverer. We thank you, oh God, for being the open door. We thank you, oh God, for being so good because we know that you are such a good, good father. So God, we praise you today because nobody else deserves the praise but you, oh God. Come on, people of God, and praise him. Hallelujah. God, we love you today. We honor you today. We glorify you today. We magnify you today. We bless you today because you are God. We thank you for Jesus. So 
somebody watching, somebody in the room. I thank you, oh God, that you will bless them. I thank you that you will give them peace. I thank you, oh God, that you will give them the food, God, spiritual food that they need. I pray that you will feed them, not with hamburgers and hot dogs, but that you will feed them with your word, and that they will eat your word. So much that their lives will be changed. We need a change today, God. We need a change, not just talk about it, but we need to be about it. We need to do about it. We need a change in the church today. So do it on this beautiful Sunday. God heal in the womb. Miracle in the womb. Touch in the womb. Everybody who will receive it by faith. Come on and put your hands together. Oh God, come on and move today. Come on and move, God. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus for your presence and your power. Now God, touch the preacher today. Touch him today, God. In the name of Jesus, touch him today. In the name of Jesus, touch him today. In the name of Jesus. And everyone under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah, it is so. Come on and put your hands together. For it is so. Come on and put your hands together. For it is so. Come on and put your hands together. For it is so. 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 Don't miss your opportunity to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. He's waiting on you to praise Him. He's waiting on you to open up your mouth and tell Him thank you. He's waiting on you to say thank you. He's waiting on you to say thank you. Don't open. Don't open up your mouth if you don't believe it. But if you believe God, come on and open up your mouth and praise Him. Open up your mouth and say, God, I love you. Oh God, I praise you. Oh God, I honor you. Oh God, I glorify you. In the name of Jesus, who is done today? Who is done today, God? It's done today. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shine on me. Oh, 
after church, as we used to say, I wonder if the lighthouse will shine. Oh, 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 me shine.
to shine on you today. He did back and he'll want the light to shine. God bless your hearts. God bless your hearts. Amen. Thank you to my wife, Reverend Karen. Thank you, Sister Tavim. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God is good. In Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, real quick. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 1 through 4. Somebody, you ought to get here because the Spirit of the Lord is in the place. When the day of Pentecost arrived and they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from the heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to talk a few moments from this word, the empowering wind in the tongues of fire. Empowering wind in the tongues of fire. My brothers and my sisters in Christ today, for a few moments we want to look at this book of Acts and specifically Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4 to explore the transformative events of Pentecost. It was a day that changed the course of history and both the church as we know it. If you could, for a few minutes, examine the passage together and discover the profound lessons as it holds for us today. I won't hold you long, even though some of y'all say, yeah, right. I heard y'all. <laughs> but there is a lesson in this passage of scripture. There are several lessons in this passage of scripture, one being what we read on the day of Pentecost. Because on the day of Pentecost, disciples were gathered together in one place. And Pentecost was a significant Jewish festival held 50 days after Passover. It was not something that was event, event, invented after Jesus had died and resurrected. For centuries, the Jews had been celebrating this day called Pentecost. Little did they know that this day would mark the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit to empower and equip them for their mission. That day, the day of Pentecost, was a great day in the day of the church. We see in that passage in Acts chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 the manifestation of the Holy Spirit because it says there that suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind filled the room capturing the attention of everyone's present it was a divine manifestation a unmistakable sign of the Holy Spirit's arrival Furthermore, they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire resting upon each of them. This imagery is symbolic of the Spirit's purifying and refining work within their lives. Not only do we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, but we see in this passage the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and 4 says, as the Spirit descended upon them that something incredible happened. The Bible says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. This feeling wasn't just a temporary experience, but it was a life transforming encounter with God. For the Holy Spirit to come 
Jesus had to go away. Jesus had said that I must ascend back to my father, that the comforter would come. The disciples are gathered and may not have fully understood what Jesus was saying, but they knew that they had to wait on the promise that Jesus had given. And the Bible says that as they waited, the Holy Spirit descended upon them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Not a temporary move, but a life-changing encounter. The result of this feeling was that they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They were supernaturally empowered to communicate the wonders of God to people from various nations and languages. They were able to speak with those that they may have never been able to speak with before. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna keep on saying that. They were filled with the Holy Ghost because I must tell you to do the work of God to be able to move forward, you have to have the Holy Ghost in your life. The power of the Holy Spirit, A, is an empowerment for witnessing. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost empowered the disciples for their mission of spreading the gospel. Before this experience, they were fearful. They were uncertain. They really didn't know what to do. The truth were told that they were hiding in the upper room because they were afraid of what might happen to them, knowing that they were followers of the way, the followers of Christ. They were scared. They didn't know what to do, but now they were bold and courageous ambassadors of Christ. The same Holy Spirit that empowered the early disciples, can I say also empowers us today that when we receive the Holy Spirit, that we ought to be empowered just like the disciples were. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we ought to have power, and when we have power, we ought to walk like we have power. We ought to live like we have power. We ought to move like we have power. We ought to sing like we have power. We should just know that we have power because of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say power. power. Amen. You ought to have that power to boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. What we see in the power of the Holy Spirit is not only empowerment for witnessing, but we also see unity and diversity. The miracle of tongues displayed at Pentecost was not merely a random spectacle, but it was a profound demonstration of unity in diversity. People from different nations and languages were present, yet they all heard the disciples speaking in their native tongue. The Holy Spirit unifies believers. Somebody say unifies believers. Somebody say unify believers because I'm going to say that because we don't have unity like we ought to have unity. We do what we want. This is when y'all get quiet. We do what we want, we get mad if we can do, we go, we stay home, but that has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Preach Reverend Hardaway. There is unity in God's house. People from different nations and language that couldn't even talk to one another were now talking to one another and they were praising God. The Holy Spirit unifies believers across cultures and languages and background, forming a diverse yet united body of Christ. Empowerment for witnessing, unity and diversity. If you want to see the Holy Spirit work, you got to come together. If you want to see the Holy Spirit work, you got to learn how to pray together. If you want to see the Holy Spirit work, you got to learn to worship together. Do I have any witnesses here? 
and the application for today's believers is that just like the disciples, and I told you I'm not going to be long, just like the disciples, you've got to have a personal encounter with God just like they did. You, you've got to have a personal encounter just as the disciples experienced a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We too can have a personal encounter with the Spirit today. The Holy Spirit desires to fill us. The, the Holy Spirit desires to empower us. The Holy Spirit desires to guide us in our daily life. But we have to seek him on a daily basis. We have to seek him in an intimate way. Can I get a witness here? He's not just like anybody else in your life, but he is someone that you have to grow closer to. I wish I had some witnesses. That you got to move closer to. And can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is not just a thing. Come on and hit the with Jesus. He's not just a thing. He, he's not just something that it happened, it hit me. It, 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 no, the Holy Spirit is a person of the Trinity. And, 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 and you've got to, I wish I had somebody here, you've got to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. You've got to invite him to work in you and through him. Come in my heart. Come in my mind. And come in my tongue. Help me to say what I need to say without saying the wrong things. I wish I had somebody here. Then the Holy Spirit in our application of the day is our empowerment for service. Because it is the Holy Spirit that equips us and empowers us for the service in God's kingdom. Did y'all hear what I said? For what? No, not to be crowned. No, not to lord over somebody, but us to be servants in his kingdom. We are called to utilize the spiritual gifts bestowed, bestowed upon us by the Spirit. And I, I, I believe, I wish I had some witnesses, that the Holy Spirit is still working today. The Holy Spirit is st still moving today. The Holy Spirit didn't just stop and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. But the Holy Spirit is still moving through the body of Christ. The problem is why some of us have no power is because we have denied the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of us can't do anything because we have forgotten about the Holy Spirit. And there, sadly, there's come a time in the church where we have acted like the Holy Spirit does not exist anymore. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you can hold up KJ one minute. I know you get excited, but I want them to get excited. <laughs> The Holy Spirit, I said the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, because oh, KJ will say amen when y'all don't say amen. <laughs> I wish I had some witnesses. But the Holy Spirit wants to work with you. Can I get some witnesses here? And I, so, so look, look I, when I walk around with my head up and I walk around, I'm, I'm not being boastful, being pride. I'm just thanking God I got the Holy Spirit. No. And he walks with me and he talks with me. He helps me along the way. Can I get some witnesses here? He keeps me going when I should have stopped going a long time ago. He walks with me. He carries me. I wish I had some witnesses. He gives me power. Can I go with y'all somewhere here? I believe that he still has the power to heal. The Bible says lay hands. I wish I had somebody here. I believe and some of y'all, why you can't get better is because you have stopped believing that you can get better. I wish I had Preach hard away. Reason why you have stopped where you are in your worship is not nobody's fault, but you got to trust in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can experience power and effectiveness in our lives. And finally, I said finally, <laughs> you find unity in Christ. The Holy Spirit unites believers. The Holy Spirit breaks down barriers. 
of division and fostering love, compassion, and understanding among us. As followers of Christ, we are called to embrace diversity and seek unity within the body of Christ. And by doing so, we demonstrate the transformative power of the Holy Spirit to a fragmented world. Can I tell you that this world will not get better until it realizes the need of the Holy Spirit. I don't care who the president is. I don't care who the mayor's going to be in this city because it's getting crazy, y'all. But can I tell you that if the Holy Spirit is in our life, and how is the Holy Spirit going to get there, we've got to carry it with us. Come on and help me. So you got to bring it with you. you got to stop acting like the world. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The transformed power of the old Holy Spirit to a fragmented world will change things. And my brothers and my sisters, the events of Pentecost, recorded in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, serve as a reminder of the power in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had somebody. I'm done, y'all. The power and presence of the Holy Spirit. When you have the power and the presence, you can't fake it anymore. I wish I had some. Y'all ever played church? Y'all got some kids that like to imitate the pastor. Put on whatever and they got the pastor. You want to imitate and, 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 and sometimes, but do you know that when you really begin to think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for you. I don't care where you're at. The Holy Spirit's gonna come in. The Holy Spirit's gonna touch your life. The Holy Spirit's gonna cause some changes. You will find yourself crying when you ought not be crying. You will find yourself messed up laying on the living room floor giving God the praise because you're not worried can I get some witnesses here I said you're not worried come on and help me somebody here you're not worried look if, if, if some of these folks have come driving down the street and they have their all kind of their music on cussing and everything believe me every once in a while I'm going to turn my gospel music on I'm going to play it just as loud as they play it and if they don't like it guess what I'm going to turn it up just a little bit louder because when I think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for me Master Shouts Hallelujah For saving me The doors of the church are open I'm done today I'm done today Thank God For the Holy Spirit Come on and say thank God For the Holy Spirit Thank God For the Holy Spirit he went up so that he may come and now he's with me in me lives within me and so I'm glad today and I invite somebody that's watching us today someone that's in this service today that you can receive him as well you can receive him as well you can receive him in your life. Believe in your heart that Christ died for your sins, went to Calvary, died, hung, bled, and died, placed in a tomb early Sunday morning, got up with all power in his hand. today. If you're here, we invite you to come. If you're watching us, we invite you to call us. Call us. Call us. Let us know. 716-285-0743.
Email us Trinity at Trinity and F. God loves you. And because He loves you, He commands us to love. We love you as well. That's love. The story. 